We came up to this apartment. The neighbor said she hadn't seen her neighbor. She thinks she's in there. So we forced our way in. She was in a back bedroom and she was really super sick. And I slid across the bed to put an oxygen mask on her. And she let out this, oh, thank God. And she was so happy to see us and she just exhaled. Her hot breath just filled my lungs. Within 12 hours, I was sick. Medics got me to the hospital. They had this thing called Nubane. It was a synthetic morphine. My system was pretty shot as it was. Those drugs going in all at once like that, it was a knockout punch. The next thing I realized, I left my body. I found myself flying through this star-filled realm. It was the most exhilarating feeling that you were just this exuberant, overwhelmingly happy, joyful being. And you were home. My name is Bill Letson. I grew up in the central coast of California. I was big in swimming and water polo and surfing. It's kind of an idyllic life, being in the ocean and uh, camping on the beach. It couldn't have been any better. After high school, I had taken a class at Cal Poly on fire control, and it really piqued my interest. I was coming back from the beach, and there was this huge fire burning up on the mountain. So I pulled over in my flip-flops and board shorts and scrambled up the hill. There was a woman there. She had a couple of uh, toddlers and a dog and a bunch of puppies, and this fire was coming at her house. I didn't know much, but I knew I could help. Got the hose out, got a shovel, managed to turn the fire uh, away from the house. The fire department showed up, and they're like, hey, dude, we could use somebody like you, and we got a, a hotshot crew, and you should check into it. So I got a job with Santa Barbara County Fire, I was hooked on service to others. When somebody's at the end of their rope and they dial 911 and, you know, you're on the truck going to help, it really meant a lot to do that job. I would have done every shift for free. You know, if you talk to nurses and teachers, military people and social workers, they'll say the same thing. You have a drive to be of service to others. In 1994, there was a flu going around Santa Barbara County. And we were running calls. We came up to this apartment. The neighbor said she hadn't seen her neighbor. She thinks she's in there. Car was in the driveway. The newspapers were at the front door. So we forced our way in. She was in a back bedroom and she was really super sick. Everything was wrong with her and I slid across the bed to put an oxygen mask on her. And so as I was getting this mask on her and tightening it up, she realized there were firemen all around her and she let out this, oh, thank God. And she was so happy to see us and she just exhaled. So her hot breath just filled my lungs. And I looked at the medics, they all saw what happened and I said, this is not gonna turn out good. Within 12 hours, I was sick. Heart rate had elevated and everything felt bad. Temperature was up. I'd been throwing up. It was hard to get out of bed. I was very healthy. I was doing Ironmans and stuff. And you never say quit, but something told me, you need to throw in some kind of a towel here. You're, you're going down. So I called 911, medics got me to the hospital. I had a couple of liters of fluid and the nurse came in, you know, I said, I can go home, I think, and we'll get some, uh, you know, some antibiotics going or something. And she said, no, you arrived by ambulance and the doctor hasn't seen you yet. And so he's prescribing this to everybody. They had this thing called Nubane. It was a synthetic morphine. My system was, was pretty shot as it was. Those drugs going in all at once like that, it just, it was a knockout punch. 
bells went off and everything, and everybody came in. They couldn't get a blood pressure. It was like 40 over zero, and they shipped me up to intensive care. The next thing I realized, somewhere in the middle of the night, I left my body. I found myself flying through this star-filled realm, moving through these colored stars and these orbs. I felt like I had been released from a dark, stuffy closet. And I was now this huge, expanded balloon. It was the most exhilarating feeling, like somebody was pouring honey all over my brain and it was running down through all my nerves. Emotions of acceptance and joy, that was your vibration that you were just this exuberant, overwhelmingly happy, joyful being. And you were home. It was just absolute ecstasy. There was another thing that was going on, and it was this knowledge. It's like all this knowledge is scripted on the universe. All you have to do is think about a subject, and it just floods in. I remember as a kid in college, you had a thing called a microfiche. You bring that thing up on a screen, and then if you spun it, then the pages would just flash by. And that's what it was. It was just coming super fast. And there was just this flood of information. The whole script of a human being, it's all there on the sky of time. Nothing was impossible in that realm. As I was flying along, I remember one thing that was really powerful was how in the world did I believe I was this dude? How did I believe I was Bill? I had this whole personality and I had these relationships, I had these likes and dislikes. All of that had dropped away. It was like I was playing a game and I was pretending to be this person, this human being. We're all just playing these parts. It's all a game. I think that the object of the game is can we wake up in the game and realize who we are with joy and kindness and patience. So I was flying along and everything was just marvelous. Everything was wonderful and I just felt so at home. And then all of a sudden I landed in a place that was solid. Right in front of me, there were these three little hooded guys and they were overwhelmed to see me. And I felt immediately good in their presence. They were asking me questions all of a sudden, like, uh, how was it? Uh, what did you see? What did you learn? What can you tell us? Uh, I was really confused, and they were uh, amused by that. And one of them stepped forward, and he turned to the other two, and he said, he doesn't remember us. And they all started giggling. It was like I had just gotten off the roller coaster and they were my best friends and they were back at the landing and they all wanted to know how was the roller coaster. And I hadn't really gotten my wits about me to tell them. This other guy, he was like this tall, wispy guy. He's made out of energy, like a swirling tornado or a, a whirlpool. He moved forward. Parts of him would separate and then catch up. And he had this big smile on his face. You could tell he was super happy. And more than that, you could feel his love. Um, and as he got closer to me, my throat just tightened and my chest was like overinflating. I felt like I was going to drop to my knees and break down crying uncontrollably from love. Historically, our, our ancestors, they have names for them. They're these non-physical beings that bounce between our ability to uh, perceive them. And they called them things like 
helpers, guides, angels. Yeah, I do think this is some sort of connection to a higher self. So I said, what's next, a review of my life? And you guys want to get started with that? Something in me that fire captain experience or something was, okay, there's a procedure here and you know, let's, let's get busy with it. The tall, wispy guy, he just cracked up. When he stopped chuckling, he said, okay, sure, let's do that. This wasn't a review of life. This was a show and tell. It was like a, a tour of the dimensions of our situation here. I didn't have any huge regrets. I told a few stories about jobs I wish I'd taken and uh, a couple other things. And then he just, it was almost comical. He just stepped forward like a father, like picking a toddler off the ground, you know? He says, okay, that's enough. Time to go back. That just shocked the heck out of me. I was like, go back? You gotta be kidding me. And he goes, no, you gotta go back. I said, no way. I, uh, you know, there's no reason for me to go back. I knew there was more out there and I, I didn't have any fear about but where I was or where I was going. As I said, you know, I, I really won't be that missed. My wife and my parents, they'll be pretty sad for a couple of weeks, but they'll come out of it and uh, they're strong people. He's like, look, you're going back. You got things to do and they're important. The room just started to break up. It just started to come apart. And he just kind of evaporated in front of me. And I could feel a falling sensation. And I dropped away from that in-between place. And I fell away into darkness. I found myself back in my body and I had this automatic blood pressure cuff. And I think that the squeezing of that would wake me up to some degree. And I could notice that the blood pressure was, each time it fired up, that the numbers were higher and it was climbing. When I got in the 70s, 70 over 40 or something like that, I could stay awake. A nurse came by and she saw my little face peering back at her and she's startled and she's like, you're awake. And I'm like, yes I am. She said, I have to tell the doctor immediately because we've been so worried. And I was like, okay, yeah, that's cool. You can tell the doctor. But first, what am I doing back here? I wanted answers to that. I said, I was home. I was home with my best bros. How is it that I came back to this place? I was pissed. I was absolutely convinced that my body was behind me and I was pretending to be Bill Letson, and, and I wasn't any longer. Now I was back in Bill Letson, and she was one of these old gum-chewing nurses, and she said, honey, you've been in escrow, but you fell out of escrow, and now you're back with us, and you're gonna have to get your head around that. I spent probably a few days being depressed, not clinical or anything, just very, very sad. I saw that heavenly realm, I saw that in-between place. I was ready to move on. You come to this realization that well, I'm not going back there. When I was back on duty, everyone wanted to know. We heard you had this thing happen, you know, in the hospital. And I was like, yes, I did, sit down. And I would tell them. I was full of the other side, and um, I wanted to pass it on to everybody. I told that story for a week or two, and then uh, one of the guys from the office said, hey, they're starting to talk about you up there in the chief's office, so you better you know, put that story away. So I dummied up, and I zipped it um, for about 15 years. I didn't forget it and I didn't dismiss it. It had to cook with me over all those years. And when I retired, um, 
it came roaring back. I was getting whispered to. This is how our soul talks to us. It was like I was being nudged just to explore Central America and to hang out with shamans and to pay attention to what Native Americans knew. These ancient civilizations like the Mayans, what they knew about this place and our place in it. I was told to go look, go into these places where everything slowed down. There's no Wi-Fi, there's no routers, and get back to the stillness. And if you get quiet enough, uh, the soul can speak to you. And most of us are not in an environment where we can become that, that still, that meditative state that opens something up to experience more. Well, we don't have to fly to Pluto. It's all right here. You need to raise your vibration through that great spirit, source energy, the sun, and the veil starts to break down in front of you. This is a earth school. It's a school of hard knocks, uh, where we learn by experiences. We signed up for all the joy and all the adventures and all the fun that goes on with this place. And we also signed up for three or four big tsunamis coming through our lives. It's all about growing in our capacity to love, regardless of the circumstances. Choosing the higher vibration. I think every second, every moment, every now is a, a new opportunity. How are you gonna choose? You know, as, as soon as I get in my car, is that guy that's tailgating me, am I gonna get ticked off? Or am I gonna be, oh wow, did I just get over? It's your choice, it's always your choice. People get overwhelmed with the self, the physical world self, the illusion of being this being. Be nice, be patient, be kind in all circumstances. There are thousands of souls watching all of us all the time, our loved ones, our ancestors, our pets, and they're not judging. They're hoping we'll make the higher vibrational decisions that will evolve, will grow as souls. That's our whole point of being here. And when it becomes selfless and helping others and sweetness and kindness and compassion, you get to leave. We're being groomed to be gods, basically, and uh, to go out into the universe that's ever expanding and continue the work of creation. <laughs>